you know, when I was, when I was told, not when I was told, but when I was young, I was told that there's two things that I guarantee in life: that being bills, and that being death. I mean, it's all, one day we all gonna pass. Away. And that cannot be more true. Or you can say we have seen an example of that in the last, oh, you know, three years. We went through a pandemic, right? A lot of trouble, a lot of people passing away, unfortunately, and a lot of hardship. Then we are going currently through, uh, well, before the recession, then we went through a massive wave of people getting fired people being laid off we're still going through that stock market crashing you have the real estate market crashing and on top of that a level of uncertainty in this country where you know war is going on in another country but for some reason you know the united states we have our notes in it and this this a lot of uncertainty going on in this world and then one thing that is true is job security you might think you are secure for the job that you're working you might think you having a steady income and all that and look having a steady income is really good right but don't ever be fooled look at me when i tell you get a little close there's no such thing as job security i'll say it one more time there's no such thing as job security there's no job security having a boss and what better other person to break this down than the gray dame dash i know a lot of you might agree with dame some of you don't like dame for the say the things he say maybe his tone but you know what they say don't blame or don't kill the messenger just hear the message <laughs> before we get dive too deep into the reaction a lot of things he's saying this is referring to like the corporate machine in the music industry because you know we we know that damn that's just a, was a former music executive so a lot of these things he's saying is about that type of industry but it also applies to regular day jobs and other industries so what i urge you is to try to listen instead of hearing try to listen to what he's trying to say i know it won't apply to everyone else but i just i like having this conversation with you guys but anyways let's get to it you know what you consider quality of living so like if you're not a person that minds being told what to do and you know sacrificing and you know just looking forward to fridays and you know having to ask every time you want to make a move and it has to be profitable then corporate might be the way for you. If you don't like being told what to do and you like to be able to do things as you're inspired and, you know, where you can show taste and, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, you have the ability to monetize without compromise and you have the ability to be fair with the people you work with and create whatever environment you want, then you're independent and you put... I want to post it right there and just break that down. You share what he said, they're having the ability to monetize without compromise. And now I know sometimes, you know, working in an environment, there's certain things that you will have to compromise just for the sake of the corporate uh, um, reputation or the company that you're working for. That might be a religious belief, a personal belief, a certain um, uh, ethics or root of ethics or principles that you follow. Just because you gotta, you know, work for this company. This company probably represent things that you don't necessarily believe in, but you know, because you have a check, not because you're getting a check, but because you have bills and duties to fulfill, you have to like kind of shut up, go along with it, maybe be part of certain uh business deals. Not that they illegal of anything, but they might be a little a, a bit shady. So that goes against your core who you are as a person. So you might have to compromise your values and your beliefs just because you want to get a check just because you don't have an option. But where maybe when you went independent, you have more power of you that you get to dictate whether, you know, you can take that job or, or, or be part of that business deal. You you have the power to dictate that. 
put up the money, you know? And corporate's model, because usually there is no one person that puts up the money, is usually volume with no margin. So like off $100 million worth of volume and everyone getting paid and salaries and offices being built and you know all kind of expense, credit cards and whatever, you don't own nothing, but you, you're living good. But at the end of the day, off $100 million, you might make two. If you're independent, off $100 million, you're gonna make about 35, 40. But it's just hard to get to that $100 million because the more demand you have, the more cash you gotta lay out. You know, and that's usually the gift and the curse of being independent, but being successful. The more demand you have, the more cash you have to have to buy to supply the demand. And you don't make money back until you've bought. You have to be out of pocket, you know. Name Dash dropping some knowledge here. I know he's referring to the music industry where he said, you know, if an artist produce a hundred million dollars, the label, the executive, the producers, the marketing team, everybody's going to get their hands on their first. And by the time it gets to you, the artist, you will be lucky if you see one or two million, right? But if you were independent, you can get a bigger cut out of that um, $100 million. But then again, it will be your responsibility to reinvest that back into the business. And that applies to content creation or any kind of business that you're, that you're dealing with, right? You're supposed to work with somebody else. So let's continue. You know, and then sometimes you might buy something and buy goods and put it on the street and you need to buy more goods, but you haven't collected the money back off the street. So now it's like you got to cop twice without re up. You have to re up twice without, you know, getting your money back off the street once. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what the struggle is with being independent. But again, you know, you have a better margin. You have better taste. You work with who you want to work with. You know, you get to come into work when you feel like it. you can be a boss. And you only want to talk to other bosses, other people that are putting up their own money, you know, and, and that's a business model for someone that wants to do things independently. You know, it's usually a real a person that I don't want to say has ego, but has pride, you know, someone that likes to enjoy what they do. That doesn't really do it for the dollar. You know what I mean? That's usually what independence is having passion for something. I, I can agree with that, man, I, because I'm not saying work for free i'm not saying don't even if you have a passion uh don't think that you cannot monetize or charge for that and make a good living out of it but if you're chasing the money that that lat climbing that ladder to whatever it is that you want to achieve is going to be harder you're going to want to have that passion you're going to want to have that thing that drives you to get up when you don't want to do it when you have those days that suck when the money's not coming in when whatever it is that you're doing, nobody's giving a damn. So it cannot only be the mo the money, the motivator, but also that passion or that that why that you have to do the things that you're doing. And I, I totally agree with that. It goes beyond the money. Same thing what I'm doing here with this content. I'm not even thinking about monetizing or making 10,000 a month. I mean, that would be great if that happens, but I have a genuine, I have developed a genuine passion for content creation and Zoom live streaming. Tune in for that really loving it it is personal it's not just business you know when it's independent it's yours you're proud of it you know what i mean you know i mean like independence is priceless it's just people that have never had it don't even understand and i don't even expect them to you know and independence means usually putting up your own dough you, know, you have to put up your own money that's independence if someone else is putting up the money that's dependence you understand what I'm saying? Now you got to move when they say move. You have to ask. You have to be nice. You have to laugh at jokes that aren't funny. You know what I mean? You have to be around the racist and let them say little things, little cute things. A nerd square that wouldn't survive in the street. And independence is like... I had to stop it right there one more time. You heard that? You will have to sometimes... And, and like I said, he's talking... To, last time I said, he's talking about the music industry. But this also applies to regular corporate america jobs or just jobs that you have you will have to laugh at jokes that are not funny because that will go against you don't want to be against the company culture you will have to accept certain things you know that people say under their tongues little racist shit that certain people from other uh backgrounds will say uh you will have to be told when to move when you can take your vacation when can you take your sick day when can you see your family? 
when can you see your kids when can you go spend time on your hobbies so it, it's a trade-off right you get a secure check but you're giving up a lot of things whereas independent you might not have a secure check but you can you will control your time you can see your mom and your dad whenever you want you can do dedicate time to the gym if that's the one thing that you do and still work but anyway being like let me tell you the perspective of someone that's independent if there's like a, a a wild dog and he has to literally eat the food he kills he cannot eat unless he kills something that day and then there's a dog that's tamed he lives in a house but he has three squ square meals a day he got to do tricks he gets petted, he gets kicked out, he gets beat, he gotta get walked, he walks on a leash. When that dog comes in the room with the wild dog, the wild dog is laughing. He doesn't care that you're in a mansion. He doesn't care that you eat steak every day. He still thinks you're a herd. He knows he can take from you because he knows he has to kill every day to eat. You know what I mean? And that's a confidence, that's a rock star. And that's the one thing that I know I will never give up. <laughs> You know, the ability to be that. Like, I laugh at anyone that's a caged dog, you know, walked on a leash, told when to eat, and does tricks and rolls over for a check. Again, he's, don't take this personal. He's talking about, you know, the music industry in particular. There are the, they are the, <coughs> there are the so-called house dog where, you know, as a house dog, you might live in a mansion. You might be eating good, right? It goes for a job. You might be working for this company. You're eating good, but they determine how much you get paid. They literally determine when you pay your bills, when, when, you, when you get to eat. And if you get out of line, they will check you back in line. You're going to have to do little pony tricks, jump around, hop on one leg. Whereas an independent is, I got to go out there and kill and hunt. Because if I don't hunt, I don't eat. But think about it. I know for a lot of people that might be stressful, but for some other people that would be like, yo, I got to go and get it. I got to go figure this out. Because I'd rather go outside, go get this money, or, or figure out the way of making it than me ha having to have, you know, it's a trade-off. Than me giving up my freedom. Than me giving up my freedom to go wherever I want to go, to eat whenever I want to eat, to, to do whatever I want. Nobody telling me and controlling me. That's what it's about. It's about not having these corporate entities control every aspect of your life. And I feel like sometimes we give ourselves up to these jobs and they hold too much controls of our everyday life. So as far as, let's take a step back. Like as far as like when you made the choice to start Rockefeller Records and go into the music business all together, <laughs> what advice would you give to somebody for making the right choice, career choice. What is what is like to you, you know, like you were talking to your children or, or just any youngster that wants to know in the hood that how do how does that choice, what do you what do you think is the, the key to making that choice? It's, it's understanding how you make your money. Like if you ask a youngster how you know what he wants to do, he'll tell you what he wants to do, but he doesn't know how he makes his money. If you ask a rapper before he actually gets successful, like what he wants to do, he's gonna tell you, I wanna be a rapper. Well, how you make money being a rapper? The average rapper doesn't know it's from shows and merchandise. They won't know that. But you ask a designer, they just start a, a, rec, a, a clothing company. They don't know what, what tier distribution, where's your margin? What's your business model? It's understanding where you make your money. But and that's, I think, a lot of ways, not only for rappers, but I like he gave the, the example of the business owner, I mean, trying to start the clothing line. A lot of us at least come those that come from the hood or come from the bottom underserved communities, although we have a lot of these big dreams and goals, right? Where there is to start a clothing brand, like my guy, Brucey e. P or maybe start your own e-commerce business, right? Or any, uh, any of that. So it's, sometimes we're so focused like, Oh, I just want to have a business. Oh, I just want to have this, but we don't understand margin. Uh, when it comes to e-commerce, we don't understand fulfillment, shipping, handling, cost of product, because of the service, paying people, where out of all these expenses I'm going to be making my money? Where is it that I make profit? What is revenue versus, you know, profit, right? Taxes, all these things that they're as important as having the dream. Sometimes we just want to focus on producing, but we, then we get mad once we figure out, yo, where's my money going? 
or these people tricking me. That's how that's how we get caught up. And I think that's a very good point. But also stand, understanding how you make your money. You know what I'm saying? Understanding what it means when you go mass and what volume means and understanding what it means when you become something that's a destination. And, you know, it's, it's not volume. It's just more just opinion leaders. And then how you make money from that. It's just understanding how not to compromise your brand and have longevity and being patient, you know. Uh, and I'm going to stop it right here because I feel like we got the point of the whole video. But I want to add one thing to what he said there last. And it's about, um, it's about having longevity, right? This is that's another thing that we sometimes people that come from the bottom, we're so focused on the dollar. We we just got we might take and, and I get it coming from the bottom. Somebody gives you 50,000. You ain't never damn it. You ain't never seen five thousand dollars in a bank account, let alone 50,000. Right. But we we because we like the knowledge. We don't know, man. If I say no to this 50,000 or 100,000. I can make a million later down the line. I can make two, ten, five, thirty million because we're so focused on the now and I'm in the longevity game. That's why I'm not rushing this YouTube shit that I'm doing because I want to be here for a long time, not for a short time. I want to develop this brand, this channel that I'm building, all the things that I'm doing outside of my work and have a firm foundation so I can build on top of that and have longevity and take it to limitless possibility not just go hey man i make ten thousand whatever i made it so it's that short-term mentality versus that longevity mentality and i feel like if we learn that right as a community as a minority community we'll be able to do great things so it's something that we got to do and work on ourselves and also i know they say school you got to teach you business but it's one thing that i heard that i've learned and heard during me learning about business myself and it's it's nobody's business to teach you business. We got to do our own due diligence and stop waiting for people. We live in the era of information. It's up to us now to go get that information and kill it. But anyways, I'll leave it here. You know, I don't like making these type of long videos. Sorry for the long video, guys. But it's something that I wanted to bring up. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, activate the notification bell. And we going to take over, baby. Let's go. It's your boy, Ron. No more. Peace. Yeah. Yeah.